guys welcome to impact so in the previous videos we are looking at essay topics so we will continue with the mains paper discussion so in this video we are going to look at the internal security questions so we won't be discussing the entire answer point by point but we'll be discussing the broad approach how was the paper the difficulty level and the broad approach of how we can go about writing the answers so whether difficulty level for this paper was i won't say it is definitely a difficult paper it is not at all a difficult paper a lot to cyber security and nuxalism it has been already asked in ups a couple of times and if you are looking at it and you are comparing this question they have just changed a few words but more or less you will be writing the same thing what are the causes what is the solution causes solution so here just similarly there is just a change of a few words in maritime security it was expected for a long time we had also showed in, or told in one of our videos prior to means that this is an important area please have a look and another uh, question was a linkage of organized crime with terrorism which is directly taken from the paper or the syllabus line item so it's a very simple paper it's a easy to moderate paper you have a lot of content to write with a lot of examples past examples with also the examples that have been currently running so overall, it is an easy to moderate paper. We we'll look at the questions one by one. <clears throat> so types of organized crimes, whatever you think of your mind, if you can think of in your mind, you can write whether it is blackmail, kidnapping, ransoming, sex trade, human trafficking, money laundering, cyber crime, ransomware, or uh, smuggling of counterfeit notes swarm smuggling all of that are there one form of the other of organized crimes now how you can add that extra half mark in your answer is by giving examples you can talk about the pablo escobar gang you can talk about organized uh, drug smuggling gangs of mexico you can talk about the d company and you can tell them all these companies they run like a fortune 500 or fortune 500 company so these are some of the examples for linkages so one here needs the other there are cases where both exist they don't care about the other and both exists and they compete with the other for example one terrorist gang they can directly take up organized criminal activity to earn money so here in this form they are competing with each other and there is another case exists where this guy wants something from him and this guy wants something from him for example a terrorist wants his weapons to be smuggled his people to be smuggled across the border which the organized criminal gang specialize in. A terrorist wants the money someone is donating to reach safely in his coffers without revealing the person's identity. So money launderers, they do this type of job. So similarly, it is a very common example that is currently going on. You can talk about the Taliban. You can talk about the current uh, D companies and their nexus with the LET and Pakistan-based establishment. In uh, previous bombings, we can talk about how Al-Qaeda was supported by Eastern European gangs for uh, moving bomb material in the, into Europe. So it is filled with examples. You can quote, you can talk about also about ISIS, how which uh, agencies were helping the market their oil. So a lot of uh, matter uh, content exists on this one. <clears throat> Moving on to the next question. What are the maritime security challenges in India? So oh, first, let us look at on what basis we had told that uh, this question was important. If you had read the papers, you would have seen continuous drug bust in the Indian Ocean region. 250 kilos, 500 kilos, 1000 kilos, or low, even more than that in this coast, Gujarat coast, in uh, Lakshadweep coast and all that. In addition to that, there is a lot of activity that is happening from China. The spy ship landing here, submarines landing here. They are built and road strategy for acquiring important and strategic ports and all that. So you can list the challenges or you can tell why it is important because we have our lanes of communication, very important for our trade, very important for our energy security, our oil production happens here. We have been finding some rare minerals on the seabed. We have a lot of other oil and gas production on the offshore. So this is why it is important. What makes it the difficult task more difficult is the huge border, huge number of landing sites, huge number of islands, very diverse topography. Of islands, creeks, beaches, estuaries, deltas. Is each needs a specialized type of equipment to man. Then we can talk about the challenges. The challenges are Chinese activities. You can talk about smuggling, trafficking, weapon smuggling, drug smuggling. Well, we can even quote one or two examples also, and you can definitely write this one, this part of the answer. 
if you are looking at the organizational aspect and they have asked three different things organizational technical and procedural if you want to look at the organizational aspect we have an information fusion centers which can which is capturing all the data from all radars and it is fusing it into a center point and giving us a picture of what is happening in the coast we have a national committee for strengthening maritime and coastal security which is the apex body for the over time coastal security we have a merit separate maritime police force which guards up to 12 nautical miles. Then we have the Coast Guard till 200. Then we have the Navy, which goes beyond beyond that. Uh, and Mac, we felt that there was an intelligence sharing shortage. He is not talking with him. As a result, they both are not able to piece together a puzzle. Hence, the intelligence is lost and we are facing attacks there. So we formed a multi-agency center where all agencies sit together, they share their information. We have white water shipping agreements with other countries. So wherever they have radars, they will share the information. And similarly, we share information to them. These are all organizational aspects. If you want to look at the technical aspects, you can write about all the advancements that is happening. The NC3I network, our coastal surveillance network, automatic identification system, our satellite, our satellite system, satellite system which can do remote sensing based tracking and and secure our borders. And with procedural aspects, we have created a largely institutional, for example, coverage exercise, Sagar coverage. We have a coastal security exercise that is happening. A lot of agencies are involved. We have statewide SOPs uh, that has been formed and issued. And we have other interagency coordination mechanism, not only at the center, but also at the very ground at the district level also. So this again is a simple question. And uh, these are some of the points which you can use to elaborate on. So moving on to elements of cyber security or the bigger question, 250 words. So one was on cyber security. So this question is, uh, what are the different elements of cyber security? What are the elements that you need for cyber security? You need laws, you need institutions to enforce the laws, and you need manpower working in all these areas, whether it is programmers or experts in cyber loss, experts in hacking, who can implement all that and withstand or create a what can you call a proper environment for us to have a cyber security. Now, keeping in view the challenges in cyber security. So here we have to write the challenges. For example, last year alone, there were 14 like incidents in India with regard to cyber, cyber crime. So you can write some of these challenges. So some of the challenges are we don't have enough awareness. Our chips that are being, we are importing it from other countries. Our data centers are not located uh, in India. Uh, so these are some of the challenges. We have a large illiterate population. So these are some of the challenges. You can mention about it shortly. Then we can talk about the extent to which India successfully developed a comprehensive national security strategy. So here we can talk about what NOL has India done. For example, we have a cybersecurity policy. We have certain uh, an agency which deals with the uh, uh, fights all these cyber attacks. So we can talk about some of these initiatives. We can talk about IT Act. We can talk about the certain and other things. Then we can tell what is missing. Now in this answer, I have taken the help of a draft cyber security strategy, which was published or it was created by the Data Security Council, but it is still under consideration at the PMO level. So here they have told what at all do we miss? And it is a comprehensive document. And they have told what and all do we miss and these are some of the things that we need to put up or we need to have in place for example we are going to have a large scale digitization if you are looking at smart cities almost all the uh, data is going to be or uh, it is going to have a feedback mechanism so let us say electricity is down here this has a pipe leakage and that data it will show it will have a feedback mechanism it will show that this area this is somewhere wrong or this is wrong with this information people will go and correct it immediately so similarly, we are going to undertake a large-scale digitization. So how, before even we undertake, let us create a security atmosphere for them. And we have supply chain security, which I was talking about. We are importing our chips and other systems from China. And there has been concerns that they have been using their chips as a backdoor to take information back from the country. So how can we do that? So they have given some, how can we protect our critical infrastructure? And they have told our expenditure is not enough. So we have to allocate at least 0 0.25 of the annual budget. It should be raised in a certain time. 20% of all budget of each ministry, which they are spending for IT, should be given for security purpose. 
and research innovation we don't have enough cyber insurance we need to have cyber diplomacy as a separate track we need people who are specialist in cyber crime existing police force whether they are equipped no they are not definitely not equipped to deal with all high end cyber criminals so i have taken the help of this particular document to tell that no these are the our areas these are all inadequate but and in the conclusion we can tell this document has been implemented or it it should be implemented at the earliest and it should be implemented in letter and spirit with all its whatever it is asking we must put it out so these are some of the points with which i have built up this answer <clears throat> so moving on to the nuxal threat so nuxalism is a social environmental and economic and a developmental issue yes we know that so you can write one or two lines about that for example put a diagram say causes you can put an arrow mark saying what are the causes we have uh, security issues there we have under development here we have unemployment here and we don't we have the economic right tribal people's economic rights are not being met properly they are exploited by middlemen you can write all that put up a small chart make sure you are covering that part of the statement and how it has been manifesting as a security threat because they have taken up arms all the violence has been uh, so many violent, violent incidents are happening in a year and how their movement has grown you can write few lines on that then we will coming on to the main part of the answer we can discuss the emerging issues so what i have listed below some of the emerging issues uh, urban nuxalism so earlier they used to be confined to forest they thought that our base is the peasant base and we will be sticking with that but now over the past few years they have spread their wings they are tackling all the unemployment and poor people of urban urban nuxal areas and they have been spreading their uh, wing here so this is one emerging issue they have been taking up organized criminal activities on a larger and larger scale and technology so they have been now started using encrypted technology they have using internet some of their weapons are more modern modern than the weapons that the police forces has been using so these are some of the emerging issues and how to discuss a multi layered strategy so here again they are not asking a multi dimensional strategy multi dimensional strategy will write political economic social governance aspect security aspect and all that no they are not asking about that the question specifically ask what is a multi layered strategy now here multi layered strategy means what are you doing at different levels of the government now again why they have specifically asked this particular area is nuxalism cannot be tackled by any one form of government for example let us say one state is very active in tackling down the other state is not active what do you do this state whenever they are taking action the nuxals used to cross into the border go into that state they will have a safe haven there not a safe haven they will be freely able to roam there so this causes a lot of backlash because this makes a state ineffective so like this it is not only that uh, some government one person is there he is sitting there and he is taking take care of all that nuxal assembly no that won't happen every layer of government has its own role to play here for example local government you implement all the policies correctly you ask what do the people want ensure uh, minimum support prices are paid or ensure proper marketing facilities for the tribal products the state level you can create your own special forces andhra pradesh greyhounds is very successful till date it is taken up as a case study and it has been replicated by other states the national level we have to talk about or we have for example crpf they created cobra a special battalion for specifically for this purpose so similarly we can uh, this i am just telling at one of the examples similarly here you can go in a multi dimensional way for example at the national what must be done politically what must be done uh, in the military wise or security forces what must be done economic wise similar at state level similar at local level you can write all of these up for example nuxals have been getting support from other countries also now a state government cannot go and deal with the other country directly so only the center has to do similarly a center or minister sitting there cannot uh, enforce and see whether all nuxal areas are receiving proper benefits only the local district collector can do that effectively so this is what do they mean by a multi layered strategy so here you can also involve ngos civil society members in your answers and emphasize on the role that they can play also so you can elaborate your answer on this lines so that's all for this video guys so these are the four internal security questions that we want wanted to discuss so next videos will come up with uh, question and this
question and discussion from the other areas of GS. Thank you.